If you're a Zelda fan, chances are you've binged one or two of the games. There's no shame in it, we've all done it at one point or another. You know, a few hours here, a few hours there. It's a great way of de-stressing. But what if I told you there used to be a Zelda game you could only play for 60 minutes a day and only once a week? Sound weird enough? Well, that's just the beginning. My name is The Bread Pirate, but everyone calls me Bread. I respond to every comment and I make lots of Zelda content exactly like this. Today, we're talking about The Legend of Zelda BS Edition. <laughs> all right, all right, get your brain out of the gutter for a second. I know what you're thinking, and no, it does not stand for baloney stew. The BS stands for Broadcast Satellite. Long before the days of the Nintendo Switch docking port, the Japanese NES, aka the Super Famicom, had a docking port of its own, an attachment called the Satellaview. Amusingly, the Satellaview was larger than the Super Famicom itself, yet it served a revolutionary purpose. The Satellaview could download information from space. Without boring everybody by going into the science of it or explaining how Nintendo was able to rent a satellite network, let's cut to the chase. This was the first time Nintendo gave people the ability to download games onto their consoles. In fact, this was a full 11 years before the Wii Shop channel became a thing. Something else unique about the Satellaview, aka BS system, was its main menu. It was a game in and of itself. After you typed your name and selected a gender, you were plopped into an earthbound looking town called the town whose name was stolen. Each of the buildings acted as menu options, and you could even buy items with in-game currency that would customize your character. This town, this town right here, this is how you accessed the BS Legend of Zelda games. And yes, that was plural, games with an S. A grand total of four of them, released in this order. BS The Legend of Zelda Map 1, BS The Legend of Zelda Map 2, A Link to the Past, and BS The Legend of Zelda Ancient Stone Tablets. However, A Link to the Past will not be discussed in this video. It was a copy and paste of the original game from the Super NES, except now it was downloadable from space for the Super Famicom. Not very interesting. The BS Legend of Zelda maps are where things start getting juicy. These maps are a remake of the original Legend of Zelda for the NES. Made with the help of its satellite company, Nintendo remade the entirety of the game with updated graphics, resynthesized music, new dungeons, and quality of life improvements, such as the ability to quick swap items without going into your main menu. It's also interesting to note, you did not play as Link in this game. Instead, you played as an avatar of the player, either a boy or a girl, depending on who you chose in the main menu of the town whose name was stolen. People really seem to love this remake. In fact, it was so lovable that they made a sequel to it. The Legend of Zelda BS Map 2. It's another recreation of the original Legend of Zelda, but this time with a new overworld and new dungeons. It was still the same basic game, but rearranged a little bit. That way, exploration stayed fresh. Many Zelda fans go as far as to title these two games as the third quest and the fourth quest of the original Legend of Zelda. Obviously named after the original quest, Quest 1, which is the Legend of Zelda, and Quest 2, which was the harder game mode you could unlock if you named your character Zelda in the original game. But that's just an observation from the fans. The coolest part about these games was the live nature of them. Because the Satellaview could directly stream information to the player, Nintendo could cause world events to happen as you were playing. For instance, stunning all enemies on screen, giving you unlimited bombs, or making dungeon enemies appear in the overworld. Some events were helpful, and some were meant to challenge the player. There was even live voice acting. The old man that you find in the first cave would regularly speak to you telepathically, giving you tips and warnings. Actually, now that I think about it, that made this the first Nintendo-produced Zelda game with voice acting. Overall, it was an impressive game, especially for 1995. But we haven't even started talking about the fourth BS Legend of Zelda game. BS The Legend of Zelda Ancient Stone Tablets, the sequel to A Link to the Past that you never knew about. Similar to the previous two games, or should I say maps, Ancient Stone Tablets featured an avatar of the player instead of Link. But this time, there was lore behind it, explained through voice acting! In the land of Hyrule, it's been six years since Ganon was defeated, but Zelda has been plagued with nightmares that tell her about a dark force that is returning. It is the job of the player to collect eight stone tablets which contain clues for finding a secret weapon which can fend off this returning evil. Look, I'm not saying this game has the best storyline or anything, but it's still flippin' cool that they made a direct sequel to A Link to the Past. 
Even gameplay-wise, this was super ambitious. Depending on how long you played the game, certain side quests would become available, characters would move around the map, and rain would occur at random times making NPCs go inside their houses. Hence, this was the first time Nintendo used a clock to control the way NPCs worked in a Zelda game. And it wasn't until Majora's Mask came out three years later that a system like this returned. Oh, and uh, in case it wasn't clear, this game had voice acting too. It highly fascinates me, and I love diving into these games. I might make a video about this in the future, but I'll <laughs> we'll have to wait and see about that. Everything about these games just seems so perfect. It's as if there's no problems or issues with them. <laughs> Guys, this is 1995. Of course there's a catch. Multiple of them, in fact. First off, these games were only released in Japan. <clears throat> Minus a link to the past. The Super Famicom was the Japanese version of the Super NES. Hence, none of these games were compatible with consoles outside of Japan. Furthermore, Nintendo didn't bother acquiring satellite transmissions in other places around the world. For a short time, Nintendo considered teaming up with Microsoft to localize the game in North America. But this plan fell through, probably because of expenses involved and the lack of interest from American consumers. Speaking of expenses, there were a lot of those. A lot. Uh... On top of buying a Super Famicom and a Satellaview, you had to either buy a BS tuner or rent one for six months. That's the thing that decrypts the radio signals. On top of that, you also had to pay a monthly fee to access the signal. And yes, these prices are adjusted for modern day inflation. So buying a BS rig in 1995 is the equivalent of $732 in 2021. And that's not counting the fees for the BS tuner, or the unknown monthly fees required for accessing Nintendo's satellite network, or the optional extra rewritable slotted cartridges you could store your games on. Cheesy Louisey, it's a miracle anybody bought this thing. Hey, do you remember a minute ago when I said Nintendo rented a satellite network? They did this by investing stocks in a company called Saint Giga, which is short for Satellite Digital Audio Broadcasting Company, LTD. Wait, wait, but uh, Ugh, never mind, we don't get it either. It's a company credited as being the first digital radio satellite company in the world. So most of the profits that they made were done via their 24-hour jazz broadcast. Or at least it was before they teamed up with Nintendo in 1995. Unfortunately, this is what leads us to our biggest problem with the BS Zelda games. Because St. Giga insisted on being a primarily music-based company, there was only a three-hour time span when you could download games to play a time that varied at different points in the company's history. The rest of the time slots were taken up by jazz, poetry, and hippie nature sounds. Seriously, I can't make this up. And still yet, in the case of the Zelda series, one to three hours is a misleading time frame. Remember how these games are voice acted? Well, those voice actors were acting live as in none of it was pre-recorded that you were hearing on the screen. Each of the voice actors were only hired once a week to say these lines for this video game, and only for an hour at a time. Hence, players only had 60 minutes to play their live-streamed games, and only once a week. It's all right though, things got worse. It took seven minutes to download your game each week and three minutes at the end, which were used to save your game and give you a high score. And these breaks in the gameplay happened during your 60 minutes. Effectively, this meant that each player had 50 minutes to play the game, not 60. But at least your progress between each week was saved. Stuff you did in week one, such as completing a dungeon or collecting items, would be saved until week two, and week two to week three, and then week three to week four, which was the final week of each of the games. Excuse me, sir, what would happen if I missed a chapter? Excellent question. In order to figure that out, I contacted BS experts, Duke, Circle, and Khan the exact same people who founded the BS Zelda homepage back in 1999, and to this day are maintaining it. The answer I got was not the answer I expected. Different games handled this in different ways. In the first BS Zelda game, you would have to try and collect the Triforce pieces from the previous week or weeks that you missed within the remaining time. Not necessarily by the end of the current broadcast, unless it was the final broadcast. So yeah, you were pretty much hung out to dry and be expected to pick up the slack. By the time Ancient Stone Tablets was made, Nintendo must have realized that this was far too harsh on players. And they came up with a better system. In Ancient Stone Tablets, it's not possible to access dungeons from previous broadcasts. 
Instead, you will find a thief blocking the entrance. When spoken to, the thief will say that in ransacking the dungeon, he's found a lot of junk he has no need for and will hand the player the key items from the dungeon. A heart piece, a stone tablet, and say the bow for dungeon one and the hammer for dungeon three. You get the idea." End quote. But if you missed something from outside of the dungeon, like a heart piece hidden in a cave somewhere, then you were not given any help. If you wanted that heart piece, then you had to backtrack and waste time in doing so. And yes, it was possible to play each of these games and never see the ending because you were too slow at playing the game. But on the off chance you did complete the game, there was a really cool reward for that. At the end of each game session, during those three minutes when the game was saving, you were given a score for your performance. More rupees and hearts and items collected meant more points, and at the bottom of the screen you were given a code that could then be submitted to St. Giga. If you got the most points for that week, then you would get mailed back a prize. No one knows what the prizes were since they were documented so poorly, but they existed. Probably. Thankfully, all three of these games were rebroadcasted at later dates, so if you missed the game this month, then you might still be able to play it next month, or even next year. Granted, the games were still only available once a week, but at least you had multiple chances to play it. Well, I mean, you did, but then in 1998 that changed. And not for the better. In 1998, St. Giga was in crippling debt, and Nintendo tried helping. After outlining a plan to reduce spending, they sent it over to Giga, and Giga promptly refused. Then in August, St. Giga failed to meet a deadline to apply for a broadcasting license, which uh, apparently you need. This was the last straw for Nintendo, and in 1999, they halted all production of Satellaview games. Thus, all three BS Legend of Zelda games were never broadcasted again. So, what happened to the BS Zelda games? Nobody knows for sure. It's likely that Nintendo has the BS Zelda games hidden in their attic at Nintendo HQ, but they have yet to re-release them. Some people have a hope that the games will return for the 35th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda series. That's a far-flung hope, but it's a hope nonetheless. In my opinion, Nintendo hasn't completely forgotten about the games. In 2011, Hyrule Historia was published and it mentions the BS Zelda games twice. Granted, Nintendo didn't directly write Hyrule Historia, but they did authorize it, proving that they are aware of the game's existences. My personal theory is that Nintendo has always wanted to have the chance to resell these games, but they haven't been able to do it because the games are structured so weirdly. Thankfully, there's still one way to play the BS Zelda games. All you have to do is search up BS Zelda homepage and this collection of links will show you how to em <coughs> um, that, I'm sorry, that was weird. As I was saying, if you go to BS Zelda homepage, the same one which is maintained by Duke Circle and Khan, you can find the files you need to laminate the games. Dang it, why can't I say this word? You fool! Did you try speaking the forbidden word? How did you get in here? Wait, how long have you been in that closet? Do you have any idea what you've done? The eyes of Nintendo are everywhere! They're gonna shut down our channel now! I just wanted to play games! <laughs> Seriously, guys, the games are on the website if you'd like to play them. They even have versions of the game which remove the clock and allow you to play at your own pace. It might be a bit confusing to navigate the website at first, but trust me, the games are there. And I can't express how thankful I am to the people who run this website for preserving the history around one of the most interesting Zelda games to ever exist. But wait a minute, what's, what's that on the website? Oh, it's a subscribe button. How'd you get there, you fuzzy pickle, you? Remember, we respond to every comment. Yes, every single one. Until I see you next time, have fun storming the castle.